All right, so let's talk about assists in Skullgirls. I'll be going over every character's assists that you need to know when you are starting the game. So the first assist is Squiggly's Dragon Bite assist. This assist is a horizontal lockdown assist. So it's really good for pressure. It's really good for uh, block strings. Um, and one of the nice things about this assist is that it actually restands the opponent. See how it leaves them standing. Um, restands in this game are broken because it basically forces the character to take every possible mix up in the game. They do get to reversal, but you get to do things like this. Like say for example, you're playing Philia. Immediate cross up, things like that. You can go for an immediate overhead and things like that as well. Um, so it's a good assist to cover your block strings. So like, let's say you want to poke. You can use it to basically make your block strings uh, safe to poke with. So on block, for example. And then you can go for a mix up. See how they're stuck there? Uh, it's really, really good. Really good combo extender as well. You can use it early in combos just to convert random hits. So your block strings become your hit confirms with assists like this. And then for a combo ender, like let's say for example, you recently a combo, you can just sneak it in at the end. So this is a really, really good locked on assist. Um, keeps your strings safe if you call it early enough. Easy hit confirms, easy restands, very, very good. Squiggly's other good assist is her crouching hard punch assist. So it is also a locked on assist, but it doesn't go horizontal. So it stays in place. Um, what makes this assist good is that it hits low. So for example, if the opponent is blocking high, so I'm going to set the opponent to just hold backwards. That'll hit them low. So there are no unblockables in this game, but it is still really, really scary when someone goes like overhead and then kind of like delays the low that is still really really good in this game you can up back and do it and hit them low and even if it doesn't hit them low uh the fact that you can still use it as a lockdown assist just makes it really uh versatile it's a really really good assist so for example you get the same hit confirms that you would get as long as you're close enough like that and keep in mind that this assist they have to block it low in order to avoid it or push block um, or just jump. So here's like me doing a string, use it to keep them in place, go for a mix up. It's a lockdown. Very, very good. Again, it is good at those things, but it doesn't travel. So like this is the distance and that's all you get. So use this assist if you're confident in getting in. And once you're in, you want to be a little bit scarier with your mix up. You know, having an assist that hits low is automatically just dumb, you know. So Big Man has some of the best assists in the game. Uh, the first assist is Beat Extend. So he has three versions of this. Uh, the light and medium and heavy are all slightly different. But all you need to know about them is that medium and light don't have as much invincibility, but they're still really, really good. So light is really fast. Um, medium is a little slower, but the hitbox is a little better. And heavy is even slower than that, but it's more invincible. Um, what makes this assist good, uh, no matter which one you pick, it's still a DP assist. And it is the only DP assist that picks them up and holds them in place. So, like, let's say you're just blocking, you're like, oh, it hit. Let me get a full combo. Uh, you can use it to keep your string safe. You can do something unsafe and then down back and call it. Uh, it's really, really good for that. And it's also good for alpha counters as well. You can use that to punish them. Um, so not not too much to talk about. Uh, we can go into more depth with like the other DP versions of it, like the heavy and the medium, but all you really need to know is that it's a godlike DP assist. If you want to play a DP assist and you want to play a big character that's your meat shield, that's the assist you pick with him. Uh, this assist is arguably top two in the game, which is heavy brass. Um, this is one of the two assists that if you pick it on your team, the way the game is played completely changes immediately. You have to think about how to play the game differently. So it's a horizontal armored assist that is a chunk of damage. So if you need assist that does damage, 
You can use it early in your combo and it'll give you a ton of damage. Um, but the best thing about it, in my opinion, is your ability to punish other assist calls with it. So if someone calls an assist, you can call your assist and hit it and then knock it down. And it does a chunk of damage, especially if it hits a counter hit like that. So that is a chunk of damage that you did to the assist. And because it has armor, he'll almost never lose. So this assist you can combine with just like, you just want to control space like that. It'll like protect you as armor. So like if someone mashes, you can like check them with the armor. So let's say you're doing a string. People will try to mash on you, but if you have brass backing you up, he'll chunk the, he'll chunk the hit, he'll tank the hit and then hit them. So you can do this on Oki. You can do this on resets. It's it's really, really good. This assist, and you could just call it if you want. The only weakness it has is that once you call him, he doesn't leave the screen for a long time. Like, look how long it takes him to leave. So that takes forever. So if you play the assist, just keep in mind, if you call him and the opponent knows how to punish it, you're going to lose half of his health bar. So you have to also try to protect them. So characters with big buttons like this are really good at this, but uh, broken assist is absolutely stupid. Okay, so his other assist is heavy A train. Uh, this assist is an armored anti air. So if the opponent is jumping um, on the way up, the opponent cannot block it. So you can block this normally. So I'll set them to block always, and then I'll set them to jump. Uh, if they're already in the air, it won't grab them. But if they are going up. They cannot block it. It is unblockable on the way up of your jump. It's really, really weird. Um, again, it has armor. It's a giant meat shield. So, like, he's basically a wall in front of you um, when he does that. And it does a ton of damage. So, like, Beowulf is a prime example of, like, a character that abuses this assist. Like, that, that chunks your health bar. That does a ton of damage. Um... So you pick this assist if you need like an anti-air, like if you want a horizontal anti-air, or if you want a meat shield. Um, but other than that, you pick it for, for the damage. It doesn't really help at neutral, like it'll prevent the opponent from jumping, but you can't counter call, you can't use it defensively. It's mostly like an offensive like call out tool. And then if you land a hit, then it's an OD combo tool. So really, really good assist still. Um, definitely recommend it, but I'm personally a brass user. I'm a brass enjoyer, but they are A train enjoyers as well. So feel free to use that one as well. For Eliza assist, one of her best assists is Butcher's Blade. This is probably her best assist. So this assist takes her health, but it has hyper armor. So if the opponent tries to attack you when this assist is out, um, the only way to break this is to grab it, which you can't do against assist, or to sweep it, which is a like good luck moment. So like let's say for example. Yeah, as you can see, like, once the skeleton is out, it'll just armor everything. So this assist is really good at basically covering your block strings, right? Yeah, so it's basically the assist you call mid block string. If you think the opponent's going to counter poke, you call it right before you think they're going to do it. And it'll armor your, it'll armor their attack. And then you get a full combo punish. But it does have weaknesses. So like for example. If you call it. You actually go into assist cooldown. So you can't call it again right away. Um, and what this also means. Is that you can't DHC. If you hit with it. So there are a lot of scenarios where you could have killed if you DHC. If you use the assist, you can't DHC and you can't kill them. So this is assist that you like you call only if you know you're not going to finish your combo. Or you call it if you know that like you know you don't need a DHC. Or if you really need to stop them from mashing and to cover yourself. Um, but don't call it at the end of a string if you have to double super. Because it just won't work. Eliza Axe Assist. Another armored assist, um, but this one hits overhead. This assist is good for damage and also for characters who don't have standing overheads or IEDs. So double is a good example of this. She doesn't have an air dash and she doesn't have a standing overhead. Um, so like you can use it 
to basically go like low high on your opponent. Um, it also has armor. It's a good like hit confirm like that. You can use it for mix up. So say for example, things like that is cheap. Like you can you can keep them in plus frames, and then threaten the overhead and go low. And because it has armor, they can't mash on it. So once the skeleton is out, they have to block it high. So you can do stuff like this. You know, threaten the overhead, the armored overhead coming and throw them right before it hits you. And it's like pretty safe. Like very few things can beat that. So this is a good assist if you want an armor assist that also hits overhead um, and also boosts your damage. So like for example, chunk of damage. Chunk of damage. Uh, that was a, a really good example of using it because she can also like go to the other side and use it. It's it's a really cheap assist. I definitely recommend messing with it. Her last assist I would recommend is Heavy Spiral. So the hitbox is not that far horizontal, but it is a big hitbox. So for example, yeah, it, it's huge. You, you would think that it would reach because it's that big. Um, it goes in two parts like that. And what makes this assist really good is how much chip damage you get on block. So if you make the opponent block, so block always, look how much health they lose in chip. So if you're playing a character like Robo Fortune, you can lock them down and ship them. So this is really good for like the zoners or for rushdown characters who want to get in and keep you like locked down. It's a really good assist for that. You can kind of use it for incoming like this. Um but again, the only real problem with it is the fact that she doesn't go that far horizontally. So you do have to be close to your opponent to use it. But it, it's really, really good. Um, another weakness that it has is if you push block uh, the move, there is a gap between the two parts. But again, if you're playing a zoner, you can just cover it with like a beam or something, right? So it's pretty good. Misfortune doesn't have the best assists, but she does have decent ones. So, for example, this is a DP assist. It is a decent lockdown assist, but the issue with it is most characters actually have a lot of trouble converting off of it because it launches them so high and it doesn't knock down. So, you need a character that can actually reach that angle, and some characters can, but it's really, really hard. Um, this definitely takes some practice. It also isn't that big. Like, it, it hits a decent angle, but as a DP assist, it's not really the best. Like, there there are better. But if you pick her, you can pick it. It is still invincible. You can still use it for offense. You can still, like, do pokes and then down back and call it because it's invincible. Like, keep unsafe things safe, basically. Um, it's good for that. Not much to say about it. There is actually one thing about it that's pretty cool. And we are playing the perfect character to show that. You can alpha counter into it. And because you can cancel the DP into that, as long as it doesn't make contact, you can actually use it to get her in safely versus certain things in the game. So it actually does have more than you know one use. So that's pretty cool. Another assist that she has is her head roll assist. So doesn't seem that good. But it's still invincible. So say for example. So she'll still hit you. And if it hits properly, it'll actually stagger the opponent. Um, but you only get one call. The other call, she'll like call it back. And then you have to call it again. Um, it's good for like things like this. But the, the primary use for this assist is two things. One... The head comes off, which is really good. And two, you roll tag into it. So when the head is off, when you roll tag into fortune, you can actually do an action with the head before fortune comes in. You see how the head moves first and then she comes in? That is really, really stupid. And if you use this assist, you can do stuff like, so, okay, I'm over here. Uh, I'm going to tag and do that. Oh, they got hit. I'm going to get my offense going. That is so cap. So that is definitely something you can abuse. So Peacock has more than this assist I'm going to show. But I'm only going to talk about this one just because the other ones I don't know how to explain very well. Um, and that's El George. So this assist is a walking DP basically. It's a projectile that walks across the screen the entire time. 
Uh, you can basically use it to cover your approach. And it actually has a property that very few other assists have uh, that I'll show right now. If you call this assist, you actually still have access to your other assists. So it you technically can call two assists at once. You can't call another assist if it hits, but if it's just out there at neutral, then you actually have access to other assists. Which is really, really, really cheap. Um, you cannot call it twice, though. So if you try to call it again, she'll, like, dance and then leave. Um, so that's kind of like the weakness. Like, you can't reset the bomb. It has to disappear. Uh, but this is really, really good assist because it's basically, like, you just get in front of it and you go ham. And if they hit you, the assist would just come in and hit them and basically block them. So it's really, really, really cheap. That assist is, is so, so good. Very, very good for covering your approach. So Painwell, another character with kind of weak assist, but she has a decent one. Uh, L Pinion is a one-hitting horizontal assist. Uh, has a pretty decent hitbox on it, and it goes pretty far. But it doesn't have like a unique property on it. Like it doesn't have armor. Um, but it's like a a pretty good anti-jump in move. Like it's a pretty good like block string extender. Now you can use it like this. Like, just call it, jump over them, call it, like that. It, it is like a basic horizontal, like, hitbox. Um, so, you could just use it, like, the most basic ways. Like, use it for hit confirms, because it has good block stun and hit stun. Like that. You can use it, again, for your block strings. Not, not really too much to say about this assist. Her other assist is her crouching medium punch. This is okay. It's like a lockdown assist. There are way better lockdown assists in the game, which is why it's just like... It's, it's one of those assists where you're just like, I guess I could pick it, and like I'm playing Painwell, so I guess I, I have to pick it if I don't want to play Pinion. But uh, it's okay. Just a basic lockdown assist, not too much to say about it. So this one is like more big band specific. Uh, her heavy pinion is like slower startup and it launches you like this. Um, but this lets him do things like this. And then you get a full combo. I suck at this combo, but you can do it. Um, if you play this team, you want to run this assist. Because if that hits, you could do that. Or you could do this. Um, and if they block, you have a safety HC. It, it is a really stupid duo. Aphelia assist, heavy hairball is really good. So this assist on block is pretty cheap. Because let's say the opponent blocks always. On block, it pushes the opponent back. But it also does it on push block, I believe. So even if they push block you, you still get pushed back. So this assist is like really, really good at like basically making your string safe. So you can like poke into it. And it's like, oh, it, it like it didn't combo. Well, whatever. It, they push them all the way back, right? And if it hits, you get a full combo. Like, oh, it hit. Really good lockdown assist, especially in the corner. Good combo extender. A uh, good hitbox, actually. Well, I guess it's not a good hitbox. More like it's like really low to the ground. Like that. So, it's weird. That assist will hit people like in weird angles that you never would think possible. Really good space coverage. So, like, you can dash jump. Like it, like that, behind it. Um, very good lockdown assist. Good for zoners and good for characters with like, like one hit mixups like Cerebella and stuff like that. Let me not perform bombos. For other assists, a DP assist, heavy up though. Invincible, you get a combo off of it. Uh, DP assists are basically the same idea. You do something like unsafe. 
or like you whiff, you can like block and call your DP assist to cover you, or like someone's like pressing you, and you're just like, get off me, you can call your DP assist to help you with that. Very, very good. Very, very good to have an assist that gets someone to stop jumping at you. Like that. Um, it's good. So you can choose to play her as a DP assist too. Which honestly is pretty crazy that she has one, but that's for another day. Sarabella has probably the third best assist in the game, which is Saracopter. This assist is ridiculous. So look at the hitbox on this move. I'm going to put it in a little bit of a slow motion for you guys. So it is... It is basically an anti-air assist. It is a lockdown assist. It is a mix-up assist. It does everything. Um, and it's also the best assist for incoming. If you kill a character or snap a character, you just call her and it's pick a side. Pick a side, buddy. What side am I on? You don't know. I, I don't even know what side I'm on when I call this assist. You can break their ankles with this. Like, you can walk forward and then call it and then walk back. And this is 100% safe. Like, they have to take that. It is so cheap. If someone jumps at you reckless, like, say, for example. They get anti -aired. This assist anti is like crazy. And on top of that, it is like the best combo ender in the game. If you do a full combo and you end your string of copter, that adds a chunk of damage at maximum disease. So it, it's it's like godlike assist. It does everything. It actually does everything. She also has a horizontal armored attack. Uh, this assist is really good. It doesn't cover anything but that horizontal space, so it's a little limiting. But it goes far, it has armor, it does a pretty good amount of damage, like that did 1400. So it's really good for mix-ups. The armor can cover uh, you from the opponent mashing sometimes. Um, you pick this assist like if you want to get chunks of damage from your mix-ups. Or you want this like grounded horizontal space control. Really good for that. Good for the zoning characters because zoning characters can fill the screen with projectiles and then the punch will cover you. So one of the main teams that uses this, for example, is this team. So as you can see, that covers like everything. So really good assist. Her third assist is an anti-air type assist. So that is a hit grab. Same thing as A-Train. If you're on the way up from your jump, it's unblockable. Um, otherwise you can block it. You can combo into it. So, for example, I'll show it again. So, if you're already in the air, you can block it. But on the way up, it's unblockable. Um, this assist is really good for setup characters or characters and players that just want people to not be in that general area in the air. So, the hitbox on this move is actually ginormous. It's a giant box like that. Um... So it's pretty good, but it doesn't really have use in block strings. You just mostly use it to cover that space or to set up with your character. So for example, let's say you're playing Valentine um, and you want to set up your vials. You have enough time to load vials and stuff like that. Uh, this works with like hype. This works with like robo missiles. So like if you are okay with having an assist that isn't really that good outside of this one specific thing, um, it's really, really good for that. You kind of bank on like your abilities to win without a neutral assist. So it's good for that. Valentine legit has like no assist. Um, this assist, a horizontal grounded attack. It's good for some characters. So, like this character can get a lot of damage off of this. And this character can also get like conversions with it. 
But other than character specific stuff, it's not like really useful. You really only play this character on point. Um, but thankfully there are some synergies like this where like she has an assist that actually makes the character better on hit. So it's it's alright. Parasol also has a DP assist. That is a invincible attack. You can use it to defend yourself. Same as the other ones, don't have to go into too much detail. Uh, it does really good damage actually, it does a thousand damage, it's really really good. You can use it for mix ups, use it for pressure, just the same, it's just a DP assist. It's good. Our other assist is her Napalm Shot, so the light version of this move goes like pretty slow across the screen. Um, it's good to like go in, like characters like go in behind it, and then on hit and block it leaves a projectile there that blows up over time. Um, if you're good with setups, you can kind of like use it as basically a defense mechanism, you can be like... You know, you go, go for your mix-up, if it doesn't work, you let the bomb like take its course. Um, good for space control mostly, um, the occasional setup here and there, but it's mostly to control space, to go in behind it, it's really really good. So fast characters are good with this, um, but there's not much else to say about it. It doesn't add that much damage, in fact it does almost no damage, um, it's legit just for control. I'll just show off the heavy version, same assist but way faster. I prefer this one personally, just because I I want the assist to like reach a certain point when I call it. Uh, but whatever is more comfortable, you just pick it. Again, it's just for control. Double has this move called Horner Bomber. She has three versions of this move, and they're all good assists. So the light version of this move is actually a invincible assist. So it's another DP assist in the game. Um, but this one is interesting because it's like horizontal and not vertical uh, like the other ones are so you can use this one for pressure you can use this one to basically stop people from like attacking you reckless like that um, it's really really good for that really good combo extender uh, it's fast so you can mix with it yeah it's it's really good if you need a DP assist and you don't want to play the other characters you can always pick double Hornet Bomber M, so the medium version, isn't invincible, and it goes at a different angle. So it kind of like curves up and then comes down. Um, this makes it awkward because sometimes the opponent can like crouch under it, uh, even though you don't want them to. But it doesn't happen too much, like there it happens, that's annoying, but this assist, really good lockdown assist, adds damage. And it covers a, a good horizontal space. And it's like, it's really easy to convert this with a lot of characters in the cast. So, for example, like Philia. Like, if you just call in and it hits, you're like, oh, it hit. And then you drop it like that and you die. But yeah, you pick this assist if you want, like, a, a two-for-one, like, horizontal space control damage and lockdown you pick this assist it's really really good and it's really easy to use so i recommend uh all beginners to actually start with this assist first because it's it's just easy to use heavy hornet bomber uh she goes up higher it does more damage it's like beefier uh this assist you don't really pick too much with the cast just because the angle it hits at is just really really bad uh, for most characters, like use this assist if you want to control that like specific space in the air, but um, that's like basically it. You'll mostly see zoners use this or Big Man use it just because he can control space like crazy. Um, but like uh, medium, it also has a problem where it's just like it'll hit crouchers, but then sometimes it'll just go over it, and it's it's like bro when that happens like. You don't get anything off your mix-up sometimes. Uh, it's a really annoying assist. But when it hits, it's like, damn, that did a lot of damage. So if you just want that, like, air control, you pick that assist. Cilia Slide is a advancing low that uh, pierces armor. So it breaks armor. So, for example, we're bringing Robo Fortune. But this will break the armor. Uh, so it's armor breaking, it is a launcher, so you can use it to extend combos like this.
Um, and the fact that it hits low just makes it cheap. Like, someone jumps at you, and it's immediately just like, now they have a jumping low. Like, that is cheap. Um, similar to Squiggly, like, how cheap that is, this one is advancing. So it goes really far. So the opponent has to avoid it. Which means that if they start jumping it, because they don't want to get hit low, it opens up things like this, for example. It's like they're trying to jump in, you throw them. It, it's it's so good. Um, really good for characters like Parasol and Bella because these characters can use it to extend their combos uniquely. Uh, so Bella, for example, uh, normally can't convert this. But with that assist, she can. So I'll try to land it. Uh, that's cheap. That just makes her command grab OD scary. Um, really good for characters with one hit overheads as well. But yeah. It's a cool assist. Fuku has pretty decent assists. So this assist, um, it's like a worse squiggly dragon bite. It's a horizontal lockdown assist that restands you. So it'll leave you standing when it's done hitting you. As you can see, it's like really wonky. Um, but it lets you get mix up. It's fast, so you can get mix ups like that. Uh, you can just use it to control that horizontal space. Um, but it is a like really fast, like pseudo locked on assist. Not really too much to say about it. Just use it if like you pick her and you just want a locked on assist. Her other assist is actually a lot more interesting. Um, it is a hit grab that goes through projectiles. So, for example, let's say you're fighting Peacock. Like, the shadow will just go through, like, whatever's on the screen and grab the opponent, which is really, really cheap. But it's also a good assist to basically, like, do setups. So, for example, Cerebella can do things like this. Um, so it's really good for that. Because it, it kind of grabs you and puts you, like, in this, like, weird state above you. <laughs> like, characters can use that air state... To basically set up really, really cheap, annoying mix-ups. So it's like a decent neutral tool. Um, good against projectiles. But really good for setting up like that cheap. Like. Like they're in the air right directly above you scenario. It's, it's really, really good for that. Her last assist is her L Fireball. This assist is cheap because it's similar to uh, Peacock's Bomb. But she can throw out multiple at a time. As you can see, I threw out the, uh, two there. Thank you, Shazak. So it's a, it's a really good assist. You can use it to get in. And then you can call multiple of the assists as long as you have the time to do it. It's, it's really, really good. It, it is, like, it is deceptively good. Because, like, it'll be behind you. You'll, like, call it here. And then, like, you'll go in and you go for a poke. And if they hit you, it'll protect you. So, it's it's good for offense and defense. Um, it doesn't do that much damage. It does decent damage. That's 600. That's decent. Um, but the space control and, like, the safety from that assist is really, really nice. Very underrated assist. A Beowulf's Heavy Chair Toss is invincible. It's a DP assist. One of the better DP assists in the game. It's actually really, really crazy how good this assist is. Um, Multi-purpose. You can use it for mix-ups on incoming. That's cheap. I have no side, idea what side to hit on. But it does have a big weakness. Um, once you call it, the chair actually goes into cooldown. So you can't call it again until it uncools down. And it's really stupid. But it that just is what it is. Um, this is another assist where it's like... It's a really good alpha counter. Because it's super invincible. So you can do things like this. Because you're invincible the whole time. And if it hits like that, like you just combo them. It is cheap. You don't really use it for this, but if you want, you can use it as like a projectile. Um, Kind of funny. You can just be like, hmm. It's, it's funny. This light chair toss is a low, not invincible. I needed to stop attacking me. 
um, and it is a launcher. It also counts as a sweep, so it'll break armor too. So it's, it's kind of like a Cilia slide that goes into cooldown, but he doesn't put himself out there to get hit. So that's kind of like the give and take. Really good for like one hit, hit confirms like that. So like if a character has an instant overhead, one button hit confirms are open. Like if you jump over somebody, that's really cheap. Like just jumping at someone and having a low option in this game is really cheap. And people will try to jump in this scenario. And like I showed earlier, if people try to jump and you know they're going to jump because they're not trying to get hit low, uh, then you could just start like just, just throwing them. That is a lot of option coverage, just doing that alone. It's really, really good. Okay, so for this assist, you actually have to set it up first, um, which makes it kind of like really hard to use. If you didn't have to set up for it, it would probably be his go-to assist. Um, but the requirements with this assist is he doesn't have the chair equipped, and then you tag him out. And he gets access to his crouching hard punch assist, which is an armored launcher. This assist is actually pretty OD, but it's definitely unexplored, just because you have to play him on point to get the chair off to do this assist. If he has the assist equip, the assist becomes his launcher. But it's not, this assist sucks. It's just a normal with no invincibility. Like the hitbox is not bad. But like who, who needs a launcher as an assist, right? So it's a really cheap assist if you can get his chair off and then get him out. Because again, it has armor and it's a launcher. And it's multi-hit. That is so cheap. RoboFortune has the best assist in the game, in my opinion. Uh, it's a beam assist. So this assist does everything. It doesn't really lose to any assist in the game, except for Brass sometimes. It controls that space, and nobody can contest it. The only way to avoid it is to crouch it, but if you're crouching it, you are screwed. So let's say, for example, the dummy is crouching. The beam won't make contact with them. But if you're playing a character with an instant overhead and they're crouching, you just overhead them. So not only do you have this crazy control, you also force them to basically bend to your will, right? They can either block it and take a mix up. They can jump into it and take a mix up. They can crouch to avoid it and take a mix up. It doesn't matter what they do. Uh, it's also really good on incoming. What side did that hit on? I don't know. You don't know. We'll never know. It's it's just like, wow. That was crazy. Um, Godlike assist, bro. Like, if you have played any team game, like, the power of beams is so real. You just go nuts. You just call it. You're like, I feel like winning neutral. I have now won neutral. Freaking God assist. Actual god assist. And for some reason you don't like beam, you can pick the lockdown armor assist. And it's like, it's good. It's just, I wouldn't pick her for that. Annie has like 5 million assists. So the first one is heavy knuckle. Horizontal locked on assist that causes a wall bounce. So again, certain characters, they see it hit, you're like, oh, it hit. And you get a full combo. Good for mix ups. Does a lot of damage. Good corner carry. Um, and yeah, generally a really good assist. Good hitbox on it too. We'll only punch once if it whips though. Really good on block as well. Actually, for like the zoning characters, this assist is actually really, really good. Because look how far it pushes you back on block. And even if you push block, it just keeps you stuck. So it, it's it's good. She can use the light version of this move. It doesn't go as far. Doesn't wall bounce. But it launches you. So this assist is good for people who just want like a basically kind of like a, a Hornet Bomber-esque -esque assist. They just want like a, a, a fast, simple lockdown assist that'll help them like Extend their pressure, extend their mix-ups, and then like easy hit confirms. You pick the light version of this assist. Um, it's actually pretty good. It's not a bad assist at all. It's actually pretty good. But she has a DP assist. This assist is OD because it launches you to heaven. And then you have to like, you have to really like go over there to convert it. 
you're like, oh god, it hit. I have to go all the way over to convert it. But it's really got like in the corner. It's like has all the invincible properties. And on block, it has more blocks than the other DPSs. Um, that might change. Um, so for now, just think of it as a, another DP assist. You're like, oh, I have a DP assist. Get off me. Really, really good assist. DP assist in this game are great. Another assist she has. So that is an overhead assist. It's a pretty decent assist. It's really good for characters like Double uh, who don't have standing overheads. You can go like low and then overhead, um, similar to Axe. Um, but what makes this assist special is that you can actually buff it. So if you play any point and you combo into this and tag her out, this assist now launches and does a ton of damage. Takes a little bit of your meter, but it becomes a insane assist. Look at that launcher. Look at that knee. So like if you if you're just like damn, I, I kind of want to set up for something better. You know, they, these assists aren't doing it for me. This is an assist that has, like, multiple utility. It it chunks your health bar, dude. Look at your health bar. It does, like, 2,000. I think that might be, like, probably the most damaging assist. So this assist is a horizontal projectile. Use it to go in. Use it to cover yourself. You're like, like that. It's hard to combo off of, but... The space control you have is crazy. So, like, if you play a zoner, uh, this assist isn't that bad. And if you play someone like Beowulf who wants to get in and needs coverage, like, this assist is good for that. It is so scary. Uh, a common scenario is, like, you call it, you get in, you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you. It's like, hit me, bro. I, I get the beam behind me to cover me. Mix. It it's cheap as hell. Um, in my opinion, not as good as the other assists, but definitely an interesting assist, like, nonetheless. It's just cool. You can definitely meme somebody with this assist. Look at that. That's just, it's just funny, man. Uh, but yeah, those are all the assists as someone who's new. Uh, those are the only assists you need to know about for now. That's it. We're done.